Hi everyone, welcome. It's Dr. Shafali here with day 18 of my Viral Wisdom course, <clears throat> which is inspired by what we're going through, but really it's a testament and an ode to all that I teach. And I'm just encapsulating it here uh, in a, in a bite-sized way for you to maybe gain some inspiration to gain some joy, some abundance, and some perspective on what we are going through collectively because there's so much we're going through collectively. Um, somebody's asking me where I'm from. I live right outside New York City on Long Island. So we are in many ways, or I am, in the center of what's going on and definitely feeling a lot of feelings about all of it. So today what I'd like to focus on, hi everyone, welcome in, hi Annette. Um, so today what I'd like to focus on is the truth of our reality, of our solitude existence. So in many of my teachings I've talked about how this virus has shown us how interconnected we are. But today I'd like to talk about the cor corollary of that the corollary truth of that, that as much as we are connected, we are also solitude, we are in solitude. So the corollary truth of that is that with the interconnection comes also an awareness of our individual paths. We are on individual paths. So yes, we are connected and our paths entwine, but at the end of the day, we are journeying through life solitary. Doesn't mean it's lonely, but it definitely means it's alone. Now, many of us don't like to confront this truth, but I will tell you how to confront it in a way that's liberating, that's empowering, that's magnificent. Okay, so hang in there with me. It'll take a few moments because my teachings are not instant. So, when we confront this idea and contemplate it, that we are at the end of the day and the beginning of the day alone. What is aloneness? It is a journey that can be walked solitarily. It doesn't mean you have to be depressed about it or lonely about it. That is what we put on being alone because culture has told us that to be alone is a bad, 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 bad thing. Culture has told us there's strength in numbers. Culture has told us to belong. And the more friends we have and the more likes we have and the more followers we have, the better. And what wisdom tells us is that that's not true. That's not true. Wisdom tells us that we came alone and we will leave alone. What that means is that we are transitory visitors to this thing called life certainly to this thing called life in this body. We're transitory. We come here for a moment in time, a speck in space. In that speck, at the end of the day, what we feel, what we go through, what we experience is a solitary experience. Now we can share it with others. And if we are very blessed, we may have had parents who were tuned to us to give us the feeling that we had soldiers in arms, that we have sisters and brothers together in a tribe. But, you know, they call it the terrible twos, right? There is a moment in our children's first memories at 18 months old, where they first realize, holy shit, I am not my mother. My mother is not me. She's a whole different person. And it takes a long time for object constancy, it's called, object permanence to sink into the infant. But the first time the, uh, the psychologists have noted that the infant realizes that it's on its own is 18 months. It's the time for separation anxiety. All of you may remember your kid going through it. The kids go insane because the kid realizes for the first time, what? This breast is not my breast. This being is not my being. Right? And the kid goes crazy. They cling to the parent. They, my daughter went through a phase where, oh my goodness, she killed me. All she would say was only mommy, only mommy. 
and I used to hide behind the couches, slink under the rug, right? Like put off all the lights so I could run across so she couldn't see me. Because the moment she saw me, she was only mommy, only mommy. Because it's the first time the kid realizes, what? I am separate from that being. That being is my, my food, my trash, my bed. My, my everything and now that being is walking outside of me and the kid goes ape okay it goes ape shit crazy so in the same way that it's traumatic for a toddler in the same way it is traumatic for us as wisdom seekers not just as people to fully capitalize on what it means to walk a solitary journey now Culture has told us solitary, sol, solitariness is not good. That we should, who are you eating with? And if, if our child says, mom, I ate alone. <gasps> you ate alone in the cafeteria? That means no one loves you? That means you don't belong? That means you're not good enough? That means I've done something wrong, right? Or if you are not married, holy shit, you cannot not be married. If you're not married, something is wrong with you. What? You have no one to call your own. You're not attached to someone else. You're not a mister or a missus. You're not, you're not a parent. You're not a, you're not a partner. <gasps> How are you living? Right? And if you're over 40, that's it. Something is wrong with you. For sure. Because culture likes us in numbers. Now, on one level, culture understands that it is to our advantage that we live in a community. Great. Wonderful. We, we must, we must be interconnected. We should be uh, living tribally and communally. But in essence, our spiritual journey is walked alone. Now, when you capitalize on this as a wisdom seeker, not just, not just intellectually, but truly understand what this means on a wisdom level, what this means is that you have to know yourself. You must acquaint yourself with yourself all intimacy then begins and ends with you and i think this virus is showing us in a big way that we don't know who we are we don't know who we are without our girlfriends and our boyfriends and our pubs and our movies and our entertainment and our theater and our stadiums and our football and we don't know who we are we're like who are we and we are in stupefaction because now we're like, huh? I, 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 I don't know who I am. <laughs> what am I supposed to be? I'm supposed to be doing things and be, be somebody in the world. And now there's no world to go out to, right? We can't dress up and hide in our heels and our fancy clothes and our designer labels and our fake lashes and fake hair. We have nowhere to go. And we certainly don't want to dress up for our partners. We're like, ah, I don't want to dress up for you. I like to dress up for strangers. So strangers can give me accolades. I don't want to dress up for you. And what? I have to be a good person for my kids. And I have to be inspirational for my kids. Enough. I want strangers. <laughs> That's how we've been living our lives, right? We women especially. Now we realize, huh, how come we're okay in sweatpants all the time? But... When we go out, oh, we can't wear sweatpants. How come we're okay with our hair graying now? Oh, I'll tell you why and how. Because only our partners are looking at us. Poor partners. So now we're beginning to realize we don't know who we are alone, on our own, right? How much Facebook can we look at? How much Instagram can we look at? How much Netflix? We're like, damn it. I'm like really bored with myself. I'm bored. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with myself. I don't have purpose. I don't have passion. I'm sick of my kids. I'm sick of my partner. So now we have asked, how much do we really love ourselves? And let me tell you, if it wasn't for this virus, we would never confront this question. So when I went for my Vipassana meditation retreats, the first time I went when I was 21, I promise you, I looked at the clock every 30 seconds. And I was like, what? It's still the same minute. The minute has not passed. Forget the hour, forget the day. You know why? Because I couldn't bear to sit with myself. It was torture, torture. I was like, why am I here? And the only reason I stayed, honestly, is some pride 
And because I didn't know how to drive a car at 21. Yes, I was fresh off the boat of India, didn't know how to drive. So I was like, damn it, where will I go? And I'd just come to America. It wasn't even fancy, wasn't rich, wasn't anything. Not that I'm rich now or fancy now, but I was like, where will I go? I was in the middle of some, some boon town in California. So I stayed, but I hated it. I hated it, I hated it, I hated it, I hated it because all I had was me and I was not fun. And I was so tortured with my own presence. I was like, I, I don't like me. I want to run away from me. And there was nowhere to run. There was no food. We couldn't even run to food. No alcohol, no sex, no boys, nobody to distract myself. Only me, 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 me. And I realized for the first time how little I like myself. How it, until then it hadn't even occurred to me that, oh, I was supposed to like myself. I had grown up thinking, I don't need to like myself. Others need to like me. That's all. I exist so others like me and I like others. The idea that I needed to wholly, solely, completely, satiatingly be full of my own being was unheard to me. I, I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. But no one was talking to me. It was just my realizations. The holy cow, I have to know me, like me, be intimate with me, adore me, celebrate me, be entertained by me, generate my own excitement, my own inspiration, my own initiation, be independent, not turn to anyone, like look within. What? No one told me this. I was 21 years old, no one told me this. And you're probably hearing it and going, wow, no one told me this at 44 or 45. So the deep truth of what I'm trying to tell you is that this virus is showing us that we don't really love ourselves. And I'm not saying it in some cliched, uh, you know, uh, law of attraction sort of love yourself kind of way. No, no, no. Really, really. Are you okay being with yourself 24-7? What if you never went outside again, ever? What if you never saw your friends again? Yeah. What if you never? What if you never got uh, another chance to go to a theater or another place to dress up? It was just you with you with you. That's the fundamental lesson of this virus, right? Ourself and others. The connection we have to ourselves and the connection we have to others. But we're realizing that there isn't much connection to the other if we don't connect to the self. So now we're really confronted with how much do I truly love myself? And when we have to confront that question, how much do I truly love myself? You begin to understand, wow, I don't even know myself. I'm not independent. I'm not autonomous. I'm constantly waiting, waiting for my parents, waiting for Trump, waiting for the government, waiting for my partner, waiting for my children, waiting for tomorrow. But I don't know how to just be with myself, that I in my own being and my own universe, I in my own being and my own creator, there's no creator out there. It's here. I in my own being and my own happiness generator. This is just within me. So this is the confrontation. This is the final frontier. Of course, the concomitant frontier is that we're all connected, but no point being connected to anyone else when you're not connected to yourself. So no one out there can define who it is you are. No one out there can give you permission to wake up. No one out there is here to motivate you. No, don't wait for me. Don't wait for Como. Don't wait for anyone, your governor, whoever it is, your parent, no. And certainly don't depend on them for being the leader. Don't wait for another to be in joy for you to be in joy. Don't wait for them to give you passion for you to be in passion. Don't for the, wait for them to give you your answer. No, now this virus is showing it's time for us to grow up. And growing up means you can do it. You can do whatever you're looking for somebody else to give you on your own. My greatest emancipation, and it's still in development, has come from realizing what? I'm totally okay on my own. I didn't need everything society told me I needed. I didn't need to feel fulfilled the way society told me I needed to be fulfilled. What? I'm totally okay on my own. In an autonomous, powerful way, not in an arrogant way, not in a, oh, I don't need anyone sort of way. No, I need, but not before or, or above needing myself. So this virus is showing us 
How are you showing up for yourself? How are you able to activate your own power? Are you waking up from your own motivation? Are you developing your own relationship to your own body, to your own present moment? Are you having a love affair with your own present moment? Do you know the present moment is your partner? It is your love, it is your affair, it is your seduction, it is your inspiration. The present moment, you and the present moment. That you don't need anything else outside. You can go for a walk on your own. You can sit in the garden on your own. You can look outside the window on your own. You can read a book on your own. Yes, for hours and hours and hours and hours. Because you are a whole being that you can have a relationship with. And you are full of energy. And culture has told us that you on your own is a dismal cut caricature. If you are on your own, oh, you know, my mother can make anybody feel lonely, okay? So when my mother comes to visit and my dog is sitting on, her, on my dog's own self, my mother will go, oh, poor dog. My, this dog is feeling lonely. Poor thing. This dog should have more friends. You should take this. You should have more dogs. And I'm like, mom, how are you noticing this dog is lonely? Has this dog said it's lonely? The dog is just sitting on its own as dogs sit on their own. How are you saying that the dog is lonely? You know? And then anytime my daughter is on her own, anytime, my daughter is an only child. So, oh, my mother could had a field day with my daughter being the only child. Oh, poor thing. She will have nobody to grow up with. Who will she be with when you die? I'm like, mom, I'm going to die right now with your complaining, with your whining. Who is she going to be with when you grow old? Oh, poor thing. Oh, so anytime my daughter is alone, quite looking quite okay. Projection, projection, projection. Oh, see, I told you, you should have had 12 more children. I told you, you should have gotten married younger. I told you, maybe you're, you know something's wrong with your body, you waited too long. Maybe you work too hard, maybe that's why you're not having more kids. I told you, don't work so hard, right? I'm like, mom, she's not saying anything. She's sitting on her own, right? And this is how we project Project, project, project. My mother, master of projecting loneliness. She can see loneliness everywhere. Anyway, if there's a painting hanging alone, lonely painting. The book is on its own, lonely book. Flower on its own, lonely flower. Because must, she must be lonely, but I'm not going to tell her that. So this is how culture cuts a poor caricature when we're on our own. But solitude is the answer to all of life. Because if you're not in solitude, let me tell you, you're not going to figure out anything. If you don't know how to be on your own, now not on your own zoned out watching TV, not on your own just vapid, vaporized, apathetic, on your own, meaning with a relationship to yourself, loving yourself, connecting to yourself, listening to your thoughts, going within, breathing, being with nature, being outside, being with your present moment, developing a full relationship with yourself. Who am I? What am I thinking? How am I feeling? Talking to yourself. Yes. Fully celebrating this person that you are. How many of you write to yourself, talk to yourself, make love to yourself? Yeah, now you all will all be shy if I say make love to yourself. You're not allowed to make love to yourself. You're only allowed to make love to another. How insane is that? Right? At least men know how to make love to themselves. But we women, no. We are only here for the other. Right? No. We women especially need to begin a relationship with ourselves in every way. Intellectually emotionally, sexually, psychologically, autonomously. We have to be our own partners. The reason why we women are so messed up is because we are trained to look outside. We are trained to be there for the other people, trained that other people make us who we are. If you love me, then I love myself. If you call me pretty, I I find myself pretty. If the weighing machine says I'm th these many pounds, oh, then I must be amazing, right? We got to stop. We women especially, but men too, because men are not really connected, have to develop self-intimacy. So intimacy with the other is intimacy with the self. But as if you are a full person, like a full person, you have to take yourself on dates, take yourself to the movie, take yourself to read, take yourself on a walk, take yourself to listen to music, full relationship with yourself. So the next time somebody says you're on your own, go, I'm not on my own. How? Uh, uh, sorry, you don't see me? I'm with myself. I'm a full person. I'm a full adventure. I'm a full journey. I'm a full storybook. I'm like so much. I'm too much to handle actually. I have no time to be with anyone else. I barely know who I am, right? So when you look at yourself as a powerful 
being. You are your own counsel. You are your own wisdom teacher. You are your own lover, your own friend, your own partner in crime. You don't need anyone else. And then if someone else comes, wonderful. Oh, okay, you're icing on the cake. But you see, when we are full from within, which is a work in progress, yes? We, we feel full, then we feel empty. It's, it's not like a perfect destination. But when you are full with yourself, not of yourself, with yourself, then the other is a lovely addition. But the other is not held on to like they are lifeline. Your children are not held on to, right? You're like, okay, please go live your life. You're not like holding on to them. Please don't go to college. My daughter's 17 and now she may not go to college. That's very depressing to me. I was like all ready for her to go. And I'm not a popular mother. This is not a popular thing because mothers are supposed to say, oh, I'm going to miss my kid going to college. But me, I no, I'm no, I'm like waiting. I'm missing for her to go to college. I'm like, hello, where is college? Because I don't need to live my life through being a mother. So close, 24-7. I'm like, no, no, please go, live your life. But mothers are not allowed to say this. We're supposed to be, oh, I'll miss my child. No, I won't. I have my full life, right? So when you have a full life, others are welcomed short-term additions, yes? But not they don't need to be there 24-7. They're not here to give you definition. They're not here to make you feel good about yourself to culture, right? So when you realize that, when you realize that you in solitude are a whole, full-time, very demanding relationship, then your aloneness is never lonely. Aloneness is just an idea, right? In fact, it is the only way to truly be present. We cannot be present in the company of others. We cannot be alive fully unless we are alive alone. So aloneness is not to be resisted. And I know that you're feeling alone, many of you at home, because you've mixed up aloneness with loneliness. But if you take up the loneliness and you understand aloneness is lo lovely, celebrate it. This is a final chance, the only chance perhaps, for you to truly know who it is you are. Go and write, go and read, go and draw. Try your hand at everything. Learn new things or not. Be with yourself in nature or not. Exercise or not. But whatever it is, please do not buy into culture's idea that if you are alone, you are not good enough because that is so not true. So this virus is showing us that we can be alone. We are forced to be alone. Now we can choose to be alone in celebration or look at this as a pathetic thing. It's up to you. Me personally, I couldn't be more joyful for this opportunity to uncover my crap, to heal my crap, to finally use this time where I'm not distracted, where I'm forced to look in the mirror, to really grow, to ask myself, how have I been living inauthentically till now? How have I been living afraid till now? How have I been living small? Who do I really like in my life? Who do I really want in my life? Who is really a match? Then I ask, how have I not created boundaries in my life? How have I allowed crap to occur in my life? How have I allowed it, right? Somebody in one of my other groups wrote how they are noticing their partner not being there for them and their partner being emotionally unavailable. And I wrote back to, the, to her, no, 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 no. Your partner is only a wake up call. Your partner is only a mirror to show you how you are emotionally unavailable to yourself, right? So this is the time for us to see how we have deserted ourselves, how we have abandoned ourselves in our lives. Use the next few months, yes, few months. It will take few months for a close examination of whether this life you had been living till now, was it your most authentic life? Was it your most powerful life? Was it your most turned on, lit up, illuminated life? Or were you hiding? Were you scared? And now ask, why was I scared? What false attachments was I holding on to? So that kept me scared. Was I afraid of being alone? And the answer, 100%, was because you were afraid of being alone. You wanted the love of the people you thought you wanted the love from. You wanted the approval of culture, of your parents, of your cousins, of your cousins and their daughters and their nieces and their, co and their cousins and their friends and their neighbors. You wanted approval. The reason why we never went forward with our lives in the way that we dreamt 
is because we were too scared to lose the love of those around us. We thought we would get invalidation and disapproval. And again, that comes back to we were not good enough for ourselves. So now, now, but don't run out the door because you can't run out the door, yes? But just examine all the ways that you were holding yourself back because you were afraid to be alone. All answers will come back to, I was afraid to be alone. I was afraid to be alone. I was afraid to lose the love of somebody I thought I couldn't lose the love of. And let me tell you, only through losing the love of those we thought we couldn't lose the love of, you will find self-love. Self only by losing that crutch, losing that person that you were so dependent on, you thought you couldn't live without. Only when you lose that, you will find that you never needed it. You never needed it. And if they leave, they were, they were left anyway. They were there only because you were presenting your false self, your fake self, your needy self. Your true self, in essence, doesn't need. It doesn't need. It can like, it can love, but it doesn't need. It doesn't need. What it needs is air, food, sleep, sure. But it doesn't need. So whatever you were afraid of, let it go now. Look at it in the face and go, can I be brave enough to let it go? And when you let it go, you will realize you had yourself. There was nothing to be afraid of. You have you. This is the time to examine so that when we come out of this tunnel, we come out anew. But the truth and the only truth is we are always alone. We were born alone and we will die alone and we will transform alone and we will experience our cancer alone and we will experience our children growing up alone. No one can know what we're really going through. Sure, they can be part of it, but don't rely on it. You are enough. Your experience with you is enough. You don't need another person to validate your experience. You are enough. And this virus is now here to give us an opportunity to cultivate your own partnership, your marriage, your intimacy, your own celebration. You with you. You are enough. You are all you need. You have you. And when you have you, you have the earth, you have the universe, you have everything. So enjoy you. Go outside today and take a walk with you. Lie down with you. Eat with you. Sleep with you. Smile at you and love you. And I'll see you back here tomorrow, guys. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me, guys. So all the, the videos are archived and you can join me to meditate. I'm going to go meditate in 30 minutes in my other group. It's a free group where I give meditation classes for free. So come. It's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash get superpowered. Hope to see you there. Bye, guys.